Hey guys, I am back working on the step van RV and today's video is going to be about how to flare copper tubing. And now for the disclaimer. Um, if this is done improperly, you can potentially cause fires, explosions, and other things. So you should not attempt this. This video is done for entertainment purposes only. Uh, hire a professional, etc., etc. Look both ways before crossing the street. Uh, don't run with scissors in your hands and all that kind of shit. So when you have to cut the tubing, you're going to use a tubing cutter. You can get these at uh, most hardware stores, Home Depot, etc. Those kind of places have it. You just basically clamp this on. So that there's a little bit of tension, spin it, turn it a half a turn, spin it, turn it a turn, spin it, another turn, and it falls off. Yay, pretty simple. This process isn't actually that difficult. You will need the uh, fitting. And these fittings actually slide over the end of the tube, and then you use the tubing device. And sometimes you have to kind of wrench it on there a little bit. A um, couple things. So when I'm running my, I ran black pipe underneath the pipe on the outside and then I poked it up through the floor and then I'm running copper to each of the appliances. The fridge, the stove, the heater, and the water heater all use uh, propane. The water heater I'm going to run a half inch line all the way to because that's what the manufacturer calls for. The rest of these appliances were all rigged for three eighths lines, so that's what I'm doing. Um, so for my fridge, I had a little bit of a problem. And that, the problem was that the pipe had to come up and out, bend 90, go through a hole, bend 90, go through a second hole, bend 90 again. And trying to route a pipe through that was difficult. Also, two of those 90s were fairly close to each other, and I ended up with this, this kink in here. Now, I could probably use this. It would probably be okay, but I'm a little OCD on certain things, this being one of them. Since we're working with, you know, flammable gas, I figure it's probably a good idea not to have a kink in the pipe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this in two pieces, and I'm going to use a connector. Now the disadvantage to using the connector in the middle, basically what happens is I've got a flare to flare connector. That's this piece. And then I'll run a tube to this side, tube to this side and continue. The drawback of this is that every time you put a connector or a joint in the system, it's another potential place for a leak. So, and it's one more place that you have to like check and double check. So when I'm done with this, what I, what I will end up doing is capping all the lines, pumping it up to 10 PSI, and letting it sit overnight to make sure it doesn't lose pressure. Now, if you're in a climate where the temperature may change throughout the day, you may actually lose a little pressure due to the temperature drop. But then what will happen is in the morning as things warm up, the pressure will build back up. And if I don't lose any pressure, then I know I don't have any leaks in the system and I'm good to go. And if I do lose pressure, then what I do is I pump up the system again and use soapy water and go around and try to figure out which joint is leaking. Uh, the hard part is that when these things leak, oftentimes you just have to completely redo it, toss the old pipe and make a new one. This is a 3 8 flexible copper tubing. And let me show you how to do the flare fitting. First step, slide the fitting on. This is the step that, believe it or not, I, I have forgotten, as have I'm sure many of you um, in doing this that you just end up like putting it on and going, ah. And here's the flaring tool I have. So the flaring tool I have is one that a buddy of mine loaned me. And uh, they come in a bunch of different ways. But basically what you want, what you do is you put the pipe in, you clamp it. And I like this tool because it's basically a one-handed tool. So you clamp it with just a little bit sticking up and you crank this thing down in here. And hopefully this will show. And what that does is it squashes it and forms a flare. And that's the piece. And that slides in here. And then when this nut comes up and tightens down, that should make a tight fitting. And it feels tight, but the only way to truly know will be to pressure test it, which is what I'll do at the very end once I've done them all. So a couple of other little pointers if you decide to do your own copper plumbing. Um, one is to cut your tubing longer than you need. Don't make it outrageously long, but a few extra inches isn't a bad idea. You can always kind of tweak and flex and bend it. You don't want it too tight because as the truck or vehicle vibrates, you want to have a little bit of room for flex. The other advantage to cutting it long is that if you mess up one of the ends, you can just you have enough room to cut it off and redo it. A um, couple other tips. 
what's critical with these tools is how far you put the pipe in. If you shove the pipe too far in, it's not going to flare correct. And for just for example, I did one. If you look at this one very carefully, you can see it's all kind of crimped and munched up. And that's because this piece of pipe, when I shoved it in here, I shoved it too far in. Um, I find about maybe an eight to three sixteenths of an inch sticking above the uh, the fitting before I before I crank this down to make the uh, the flared end works. If I have too much you get that kind of an end on it and that won't seat properly and it will leak and you'll have problems. So a um, couple little tips there. Hope you found that entertaining and it helps. And again, if you're not comfortable with doing this, there's no shame in hiring a licensed plumber or somebody who's done this before to do it. All right. Thanks for watching.